hi there. Hi there. This is my seventh commentary on on quality and inquiry into excellence by Robert M. Persick, and I'm going to start reading the metaphysics of quality section. I'm not going to do that much today, but I'll do a little bit. Our usual understanding of life is dualistic. You and I, this and that, good and bad. But actually, these discriminations are themselves the awareness of the universal existence. You means to be aware of the universe in the form of you. And I means to be aware of it in the form of I. You and I are just swinging doors. This kind of understanding is necessary. This should not even be called understanding. It is actually the true experience of life through Zen practice. And that's from Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind by Shunru Suzuki. Great little book, by the way, which I've mentioned a few times. So let me let us think about this. This is the undifferentiated aesthetic continuum, I guess you could say. This is the enlightenment that allows for the perception, for the perception, uh, however you want to conceive of perception, as quality, where you don't have categorization. This dualism is the essence of categorization. And so, so far he's been mentioning, he's mentioned on several occasions uh, that enlightenment, the ultimate goal in the pursuit of excellence is enlightenment, as he said in 1962 in the section that he wrote in the, um, in the psychiatric ward, my favorite section. All right, so the first reading is from Subjects, Objects, Data, and Values. This is a paper he wrote in 1999. Uh, I've read it a couple of times. It's a little bit above me, but it's about, it relates his metaphysics to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which I, I forgot what that is. <laughs> but um, I probably should have glanced at it before I did this, did, did this um, podcast today, but whatever. All right, so Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance left one enormous metaphysical problem unanswered that became the central driving question, uh, central driving reason for the expansion of the metaphysics of quality into a second book called Lila. The problem was, if quality is a constant, why does it seem so variable? Why do people have different opinions about it? And this is, sh and if you ever discuss um, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance and the philosophy of quality, this is what people are going to ask you. And this is what you're probably going to ask yourself. The answer became, the quality that is referred to in Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance can be subdivided into dynamic quality and static quality. Dynamic quality is a stream of quality events going on and on forever, always at the cutting edge of the present. Remember what we were talking, what this, this reading from the beginning. That's the uh, universal existence that Tsunaru Suzuki was talking about, I think. But um, in the wake of this cutting edge are static patterns of value. These are memories, customs, and patterns of nature. And that is interesting. It describes all um, Memories, of course, are, well, customs are, are social patterns of value and patterns of nature are biological and inorganic uh, patterns of value. Memory is where would you categorize that? Maybe you can't. I don't know. That's a really good question. The reason there is a difference between individual evaluations of quality is that although dynamic quality is a constant, these static patterns are different for everyone because each person has a different static pattern of life history. That would be that, of course, what we talk about, what I talk about a lot. Those are the boxcars of the train. Static pattern of life history and also what your temperament, the, the um, circumstances of your birth in terms of your biology, your temperament the whole kit and caboodle, let's just say, that make you the human being that you are. 
both the dynamic quality and the static patterns influence his, his final judgment. That's why there is some uniformity among individual value judgments, but not complete uniformity. Oops, sorry. Yes, is that right? Both the dynamic quality and the static patterns influence his final judgment. Okay, so the uniformity, I would say, is the dynamic quality itself. This is what he's talked about before. Zen in the Art of Motorcycle mo Maintenance, when he talks about value, when he talks about value, the valuing itself is always the same, and, and I think he mentions that in here. So that is the uniformity, the uniformity, the, the, the constant, the, um, the universal, the awareness of the universal existence is the awareness of that um, quality. And that's going to be the same for everyone. That is the, con I would say, that constituent element of, hum of all experience, of all um, movement in the universe. And so that, that in itself is always the same. All the other things are different because there's no way and all the other things are combinatorially explosive. So rel that's why relevance realization and the quality event have so much in common because um, when Verveke looks at, you know, uh, combinatorially explosion, you have to, you know, you can't check everything. So there is something that happens that allows you to see the way forward. Relevance, realization, quality, event, very, very similar. All right, the next, um, the next reading is a letter from November 8th, 2005. And this is oriented around Lila. You know, like I said, there's sort of two categories of readings of things that he wrote, or where, where he was public was roughly around Zam and roughly around Lila. So this is around Lila. When Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance was written, there was no division between dynamic quality and static quality. And the term quality then meant what is meant, what is now meant by dynamic quality. Today I tend to think of quality as covering both dynamic and static quality. That means that quality itself is a way of describing everything and how it's divided up is dynamic static quality. That is the conjugate pair that cannot be separated. Dynamic and static quality. It's like heaven and earth, right? Uh, when you think about heaven and earth in the Pajoian model, heaven, the, 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 the logos, the, the inspiration, the, um, f the flowing, that is from the, the, the idea, like from above, top down, uh, I don't know top down is, is necessarily accurate, but, but you, if you've read um, Matthew Peugeot's book, roughly heaven is dynamic quality and rough, roughly earth is the static patterns, the, uh, the, the, what you can form the analogs with, roughly. Mm. The next reading is a letter from June 17th, 1991. Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance takes you into the mountains. Lila takes you out again on the other side. It explains how quality works in the everyday world and manifests itself in ways that seem to be in conflict. Why are there these moral conflicts? One key to the analysis is the concept of dynamic versus static. People's dynamic understanding of quality, as described in the first book, is the same. It's the same for a rocket scientist as it is for a newborn baby. That's what we were talking about. That that's that um, that sensibility, that quality event, that thing that propels the universe forward, etc. But all people have different static histories. The boxcars, the cultures they live in, form a static immune system through which their quality judgments are filtered. Isn't that absolutely right? And. A lot of the stuff we look at that attempts to discuss value, a lot of the stuff we see on YouTube, a lot of the conversations we have where we're looking for what's good and what isn't, has to do with this cultural value. But it's very difficult for us to differentiate that cultural value from the value that he's referring to in Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, this universal metaphysic of value. And, and that's kind of why I think that Lila is 
really a necessary addition to using Persig's work in the real world. Lila is how to use it in the real world. The funny thing is, people object to Lila and they love Zen in the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, and there's a lot of reasons why. <laughs> In the real world, you have to deal, deal with real people, right? These quality judgments are a blend of both dynamic and static patterns because pure unblended dynamic quality is not seen except in enlightenment. Again, let's go back to the ultimate goal in the pursuit of excellence is enlightenment. These static patterns take over and the conflicts emerge. And Lila is to a large extent about conflict. And these conflicts illustrate the difficulty of value. And we see the difficulty of value all the time. That's why it's really important, and Lila emphasizes this big time, it's really important to understand value as a universal and value in application. And the only way that I can, I mean, the best way so far that I can see to understand that next metaphysical step into understanding value as a human being is to pull it into the realm of the different levels of value, you know, and a lot, almost all the type of value we're talking about uh, that we deliberate is the social level value. We deliberate it from the intellectual realm and it is informed by the biological realm. I hope the metaphysical quality presented in Lila can help people sort out some of these moral conflicts. A major problem of the century is that there has been no intellectual basis for making moral judgments. A lot of timidity and a lot of foolishness about making them has arisen. Has arisen. That has left society open to the sort of moral erosion that is distressing people everywhere these days, the meaning crisis, right? I mean, listen to how he describes that. Lila offers some answers to this. All right. A lot of timidity and a lot of foolishness about making them has arisen, making moral judgments. That has left society open to the sort of moral erosion that is distressing people everywhere. That's because people think that social value is the only value there is, or intellectual value. And a lot of the conflict we have is social versus intellectual value. So, in fact, that's the essence of the conflict these days. But the internet is inter it has introduced this whole level of abstraction that is so far removes intellectual value from its origin that now we're, we're off in this other ether where we're kind of fighting uh, in this virtual world that is so disconnected from the basis of who we are, which goes all the way back to the beginning of the universe. And um, I really wonder what Persig would say about social media. I wish, <laughs> I hope that if I have some kind of hallucination when I die that I meet him, that he's going to he's gonna tell me what he thinks <laughs> about all this. <laughs> All right, the next reading is Lila, an inquiry into morals, 1991. Um, dynamic quality is the pre-intellectual cutting edge of reality. He's, he's already said that in, in Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, it's the cutting edge on the track of quality, the knife's edge. The source of all things, completely simple and always new. Static quality emerges in the wake of dynamic quality. Everything we see as an object, everything that we perceive really is, is in the wake of dynamic quality, which we can't really perceive in an intellectual sense. It's pre-intellectual. It is something that just arises. It's totally spontaneous. It's totally honest. It's totally simple. All right. Static quality emerges in the wake of, dy of dynamic quality. It is old and complex. It always contains component of memory. Maybe that's answering the question before that I had trouble with about memory, uh, that static patterns of value include memories, customs, and patterns of value of and uh, patterns of nature. So memory 
is what the next analog is built on. And that's not necessarily our own memories, it's a memory of an organism. It is even a memory of, an or of, of a molecule. If you're going to look at it in sort of the panpsychist way, which I think is the most useful way of looking at it, a sort of panpsychist view of consciousness in which the ability to make a, a, bet, a choice of what's better that, that ability to make a choice of what's better is the essential nature of consciousness. There's, I know, a lot of debate about that, but I think if you're looking at an evolutionary model, which Persig's model is, then there has to be something very rudimentary in that basic division that is the origin of consciousness, and this goes into the Pajoian division of heaven and earth. But, of course, in the Pejoian division, that division of heaven and earth is the beginning of human consciousness, I think. And I think, uh, I asked actually Jonathan about this at, um, at, uh, at Thunder Bay, and from I wrote it down somewhere, I'm sorry, Jonathan, if you, you, know, you don't have time to <laughs> cycle through these things. But uh, I would like to say that I wish I remember what he said, um, but... But what I, um, but my intuition is that he said that the beginning of consciousness is with humans. Good is a conformity to an established pattern of fixed values and value objects. Justice and law are identical. Static morality is full of heroes and villains, loves and hatreds, carrots and sticks. Its values don't change by themselves unless they are altered by dynamic, dynamic quality. They say the same thing year after year. Sometimes they say it more loudly, sometimes more softly, but the message is always the same. Without dynamic quality, the organism cannot grow. Without static quality, the organism cannot last. Both are needed. They are con conjugate, again, they are a conjugate pair. And any system that tries to eliminate the other, and they do it all the time. Subject-object metaphysics does make an attempt to, to demean and diminish dynamic quality, not seeing that dynamic quality is what allows all these um, mechanical processes to proceed. And um, mystics, and, and this is why he went into scientists and mystics in Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, Mystics think that somehow we can overcome um, static patterns, that you can live in that realm of, of enlightenment. Um, but but Persig thinks you have to come down the mountain through the valley and over to the other side. That's at least what I think Persig thinks. <laughs> All right. The next one is um, letter... September 4th, 1993. That line, without dynamic quality, the organism cannot grow. Without static quality, the organism cannot last. Both are needed. Is emerging in retrospect as the most important one of Lila. And, and again, what I've been very interested in is the, this conjugate dualism, which isn't exactly a dualism. What it is is the movement within that must... It's like yin-yang. In order for something to emerge as manifest from the ether, from um, from potential, from uh, inertia, there has to be components that allow for movement, which means there has to be one side and another, and they always have to be uh, cooperating and battling at the same time all the time, and they can never be completely separated. And it's when we try to com separate them that the that the um, that the troubles begin. Although dynamic quality, the quality of freedom, do you, do you get that kind of dynamic quality always wants to transcend constraints. That's why it's associated with upper levels. That's why it's associated with air and water. Uh, no, not water. It's associated with air and fire. Uh, static quality is earth and water. That's why the way evolution occurs from one level to another is overcoming the laws of that level. 
for the example they use in the Wikipedia discussion of metaphysics equality, is a bird, you know, transcends the law of gravity. Everything is, dynamic quality is always going towards freedom. Although dynamic quality, the quality of freedom, creates this world in which we live, these patterns of static quality, the quality of order, preserve our world. Neither static nor dynamic quality can survive without each other. Now listen to this. This is really, I, I think this is the first time reading this right now, that I see how important this is in terms of the discussion of this corner. In this corner, the discussion, the, the, the um, conflict or, or the tension or the conjugate pair has been characterized as chaos and order. He's characterizing it as freedom and order. Think about that and restructure your notion of what we've been talking about in this corner. I really want to go back to this. You know, I'm kind of doing this ad hoc. I haven't really thought about what I was going to say. And it just really strikes me. Freedom and order versus chaos and order. What do you think? All right, the next reading is from Lila's Child, Supplementary Material 2002. And remember, Lila's Child is the book that is a compilation of the online, um, very sometimes extremely sophisticated discussion, mostly with people who are either interested in philosophy and oftentimes philosophy students or philosophy doctorates compiled by Lee Glover, I mean not Lee Glover, sorry, um, um, Dan Glover, a, uh, a Zen practitioner and intellectual and very interesting person from what I can tell from Twitter. I would follow him. Lila's Child, Supplementary Material 2002. As stated in Lila, static and dynamic quality are in opposition to each other. The tension that we were just talking about. Radicals and liberals who are dissatisfied with static patterns will feel less threatened by dynamic quality. Conservatives, conservatives and reactionaries will be more threatened by it. Dynamic quality is defined constantly by everyone. Consci okay, now listen to this. This is brilliant. Consciousness can be described as a process of defining dynamic quality. Remember what we were saying about once the void, once inertia, once nothingness, once darkness, once light is infused into darkness, you have to have it automatically produces a pair that is attention and and uh, cooperation with each other. There's no other way for movement or for um, there's no other way to make to, to to there's no other way for consciousness to exist than as a conjugate dualism which is a unity, which is a monism at the same time. There's no other way. So that's why I think that this, so the division of heaven and earth. All right. The division of, if you look back at the origin of the universe, you could say it's the Big Bang or whatever. This is why I think Jonathan Pajot said that consciousness begins with human consciousness is because it's only in human consciousness that you actually see the division of heaven and earth. So when Genesis says heaven and earth were divided, this means human consciousness, which is given to us by God in, in, in Christianity and in Judaism, in, in any um, monotheistic religion, is the moment in which we become aware of ourselves. But once the definitions emerge, they are static patterns and no longer apply to dynamic quality. So one can say correctly that dynamic quality is both infinitely definable and undefinable because definition never exhausts it. That phrase, definition never exhausts it. You can use the towel like a bellows, and the more you use it, the more it produces. That's from the Tao Te Ching, um, where, which is something that Persig has associated strongly with quality. 
All right, the next reading is Interview, New York Times, October 1991. And I have written a little note that it describes determinism versus free, free will. To the extent that you perceive dynamic quality, you make your own life. To the extent you cling to static quality, you are the victim of fate. The next thing is a letter, uh, October 26, 1993. Quality is just experience. It is the essence of experience. That's all. It is not an intellectual category or any kind of thing that is independent of experience itself. When we're talking about that conjugate dualism, that is the only way you're going to move, the only way you're going to be conscious, the only way you're going to experience. You have to have this division. You have to have this, um, this. You have to have. Now, when he's talking about quality here, he's. I, th I think he's talking about um, dynamic quality. You have to have, ex like experience itself means that there is a contrast. And that, mean, that, that implies a dualism. So to speak, this conjugate duality, this, un this unity that is a movement of what rough what you would see with consciousness as a dualism. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> All right, the, l the last thing I'm going to read today, and we're on page 69 of on quality, is a letter uh, written to someone, potentially McWatt, who knows. February 19th, 1994. That's probably a little early for McWatt. Dynamic quality is directly perceived, not deduced. It is normally through thought by physicists to be subjective and therefore off-limits to science. All right, so that's all I'm going to read today. Um, a little more than half of that section, and that is section um, Metaphysics of Quality, which is section th part two. So I will continue with that later, and I hope that makes sense. So I'll see you next time.